In this video, we are going to look at file handling again, but this time we're going to look at how to create text files and write data from within a Python program into an external text file. First of all, let's just talk about some advantages of um, reading and writing text files. So obviously, we, we talked about this in the last video, an advantage of reading and data from text files is the ability to quickly generate input information um, for the coded processes that you're trying to um, test or uh, put data through. So if you remember that um, reading data in from the keyboard is quite time consuming, uh, reading data in from a file is much faster. Obviously, uh, you could hard code information into a program and that makes it just as fast as reading in from a text file, if not faster. However, the downside of hard coding values into a program is that it's not flexible. And so loading information in from a text file or a variety of text files gives you that flexibility to make your program do different things. With regards to that, to using text files to write information out, uh, it's just another output method similar to uh, displaying information on a screen. But an advantage of writing data text to a text file is that you can very quickly create output information that doesn't need to be displayed to the user, or it might interrupt what the user is looking at uh, because it's not currently required, but it might be required in the future. And a good example of this is error logs. So for example, if you're running a program which is generating a map of a, um, air traffic control, and there's lots of airplanes flying around, you don't really want to be interrupted with uh, lots of error messages that come up saying, have lost track of plane number four for 0.3 of a second. However, when you're reviewing the error logs later on, that might become very important. Hopefully the plane will come back um, after 0.3 seconds, but um, otherwise there's, there's a bigger problem. But error logs are the um, usually used after the program has com complete running. Another use for writing data to text file is things like game states. Uh, so you can have a saved uh, game. So the player's in a certain location on a map, uh, has a certain number of points, for example. And the final use for writing data to text file is that if you have a database which you uh, use a programming language to manipulate and, and uh, query. So an example of this would be something simple like um, a database that holds records of all the DVDs that you have in your collection at home. Now these um, DVDs, fairly simple database structure, so you might not want to spend lots of time using a professional database package uh, to create a database for it. You might just create a very quick text file database that stores the um, name of the DVD and maybe um, the cupboard that you've stored in. And maybe you have some other information like, I know, the, the rating, so like a 12 or a 15 or, or a PG. And if you are loading that into your um, created database program, using a text file is a very good idea. You don't want to be manually typing in all of your DVDs every time. Similarly, you don't want to hard code it because you'll probably buy a new DVD or new um, film at some point and you want to add it to your database. Writing data to it back to a text file allows you to manipulate the data that's within that database. So for example, you might write some functionality into your program that deletes um, a DVD from your collection or allows you to add a DVD from your collection or you could um, take it further and you could keep a record of which friend you loaned which DVD to, to make sure that you get it back. Anyway, there's three examples of why writing text files would be more useful than displaying information on the screen. So let's look at an example program and talk you through the pseudocode. So to begin with, we set up an array uh, called myarray. It's got five array elements and they're all strings. And I'm just gonna put um, values in to four of the five array elements. So we've got word at position zero, phrase at position one, sentence at position two, and paragraph at position three. We've got a spare one there, we just haven't used it. Now, that's fairly straightforward. It's just one dimensional arrays. We're just setting up array 
with values, okay, that we can iterate through. The next line is actually where we um, invoke the file handling. So we're going to open a file called example.txt for write. So previously we've opened a text file for reading. This time, because we're changing the values or setting up for the very first time, we're opening a file to be written to, okay? Once we've done that, we've got, we'll have a, a file handle um, variable which sits in memory, and then we can manipulate that uh, through the program. So we're going to just use a, a simple uh, fixed loop here that we're going to loop five times from zero to four, and it's going to write to the file example.txt the current word that it finds in the array. So at zero, um, when index is zero, it'll write word on one line, then when it index becomes one on the next line, it'll write phrase. Uh, when it comes to sentence on the third line, it'll write sentence. And then when it comes to number four, it will, um, sorry, when it comes to number three, sorry, it will write paragraph on a new line. When it gets to index becoming four, it will just write a blank line or an empty line to the file. Okay, so you'll end up with word on one line, phrase on the second line, sentence on the third line, and paragraph on the fourth line, and then a blank or empty line on the fifth line by running that program. Really important when you're reading and writing files to close the file when you're finished using it. If you don't do that, then it keeps a pointer to this uh, file open in memory. And this causes uh, some issues because if you continually try and open the file, then every time you open it, it will create a new pointer to it in memory. And eventually there'll be some locking issues. For example, you might be in the middle of writing to a file and then another program tries to open the same file and, and write to it. And then, then there are issues that your operating system has to deal with. So it's a really good practice to close the file when you're finished using it. But this is just pseudocode, so let's look at how we would implement this in Python. Very simple program, this one. So um, just to keep um, the CIE happy, we've got the comment which we use to declare the array called myarray, uh, which is a string array with five elements in it. We set up the four elements uh, we're just hard coding the elements in here just for the purposes of this program you might ask the user to type them in but in this case one sentence or sorry one line will uh, set up the array with the four of the five elements fh is short for file handle um it's just a variable name it just keeps an um a pointer to the location of the file on your backing storage and the open file uh, sorry, the open command, like uh, open file, will look for example.txt in the current directory and open it for writing. So the W is for writing. Then the loop as the pseudocode, and then we use the file handler pointer and we say go to there and write my array and whatever the value of the index is, whether it's 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. What I wanted to add in here and what I want to explain is this plus chr13. So this is using some predefined functions. It's also using a string concatenation with the plus. chr is short for character. And what that does is it takes a number, you may remember, it takes a number and it turns, it returns a string, which is the ASCII character that relates to that number. So chr65 will return letter A, chr13 returns an enter key or the return key on your keyboard. So it actually puts a line break in after the word word. There's a line break, so the next line of the file will, will, be, will contain the word phrase, and then there's a line break, and then the next line of the file will contain sentence, and then it puts a line break in or a return, and, the f and then there's paragraph, and it'll put a line break in, and then the fifth one will be just blank. And it'll put one final line break in. So that's what that is. And the final thing we do is we look at the file handle and we close the link to that file. And it just frees up the file to be used by other programs. So it might be another part of your program is reading in example.txt to display it on the screen. 
uh, you want to make sure that you're finished writing that file before you open it for reading. And that's it in short. So what I would do next is make sure that you have uh, taken notes from these four slides, but also create this program in Python and run it and make sure that it creates the file that you're expecting. Play with it, change it, take out CHR 13, and then look at the example programs that relate to this lesson.